Hi everyone, in this video we will be seeing about iron sulfur protein. From the name itself we can say that the protein is containing iron and sulfur group in them. So there are many types of this iron sulfur protein based on the number of iron atoms and their structural arrangements. Today we will be seeing about ribridoxin which is containing only one iron atom in them. So generally we will be having an introduction of what is this iron sulfur protein, their structural form that is their structural information, general information. Later on we will go in detail into the ribridoxin. So this iron sulfur protein is a non-heme iron protein. So heme is nothing but it is containing a metal that is the iron as the metal and this is surrounded by the porphyrin part which is containing various substituents. But this type of uh, arrangement is not present in this protein that's why it is called non-heme iron protein. So their main function is to transfer electrons. So here electrons uh, are transferred in various uh, processes. We know even in our body electron transfer agents are present. So this type of electron transfer agent is present in plants and in bacteria. So one of their property is that they have low reduction potential. Since they are having low reduction potential, they cannot reduce well. Of course, uh, it can oxidize well. Oxidation means loss of electrons, so it can oxidize well. So as I have also already mentioned, that there are many types of this uh, iron sulfur protein. So based on the number of iron atoms present, here they are 1, 2, 3, 4, 7 or even 8 ion atoms. So based on that their structures are varying. So here in each uh, structure the ion is surrounded by 4 sulfur atoms in a tetrahedral manner. So this is common for most of the structures. Uh, that is most of the types of this ion sulfur protein. This is a common uh, structural information. And these ion sulfur proteins are involved in photosynthesis, nitrogen fixation and metabolic oxidation of sugar prior to the involvement of uh, cytochrome. So later on in this uh, uh, episode so what I am uploading I will be mentioning I will be mentioning in detail about this photosynthesis and this nitrogen fixation. Already I have mentioned in detail about metabolic oxidation of sugar using cytochrome. So here cytochrome was also acting as an electron transfer agent. So prior to the involvement of this cytochrome, iron sulfur protein is uh, involved in this process of metabolic oxidation of sugar. So this is nothing but the sugar that is the glucose is oxidized in the presence of oxygen into carbon dioxide, water and into energy. During this process it, uh, it needs electrons and these are given and transferred by various enzymes and proteins. So cytochrome was also involved as an electron transfer agent. Now iron sulfur protein which is also involved during this process. So coming to ribridoxin. So we can also call it as an 1FE0S cluster. So why is this 0 means? As you can visibly see there are 4 sulfur atoms but they have mentioned 0 sulfur. I will explain it in the next slide. So this ribridoxin is present in anaerobic bacteria. So what does anaerobic mean? So anaerobic is a, a type of bacteria considered a bacteria or any species that is existing without oxygen. That is it doesn't need any free oxygen to live. Of course, we are aerobic because we need oxygen to live, right? So, the, some of the species uh, doesn't need oxygen, so they are mentioned anaerobic. So, this ribridoxin is present in anaerobic bacteria and they are acting as an one electron transfer agent. So, this is, uh, you have to note this very clearly that it is a one electron transfer agent. So there are many proteins that are uh, transferring many electrons. So they will be called as uh, many electron transferring agents. But here this is a one electron transfer agent. So initially here iron is in the plus 3 form. That is in the plus 3 oxidation state. We can call it as a oxidized form. So this is the iron and only one iron is present. 
and there is no heme group so they are called non heme protein and this is surrounded by four sulfur atoms as you can see here so these sulfur atoms are from the cysteine amino acids that is uh, present in the protein part surrounding here so this is the cysteine group so here we can see this is the thiol group that is present in this cysteine amino acid and this thiol group is uh, attached to fe in this uh, protein structure so they are arranged in a tetrahedral manner so we will be seeing the distance and the angle so as you can see initially fe3 plus state we are going to see the distance of fe3 plus state so in the oxidized form so fe3 plus and sulfur distance if they have calculated that uh, for various uh, proteins that is present in some anaerobic bacteria and it was found to be around 2.28 armstrong and their uh, sulfur fe3 plus sulfur bond angle was ranging between 104 to 1140 and then this sulfur atom that is coming from the cysteine group is not labile so what does it mean by not labile means it is not in their s2 minus state that's why they are not labile that's why it is mentioned like zero sulfur so if the sulfur was labile they might have mentioned it four sulfur since these sulfurs are not labile they have mentioned zero sulfur later on when we are learning about pyridoxin we will know that pyridoxin is containing labile sulfur at that time we will mention that it is two sulfur or four sulfur but here four sulfurs are not labile so whatever the sulfur is coming from the cysteine is not labile that's why it is not mentioned in the naming so we have seen about the oxidized form when it is getting reduced that is it is gaining an electron and it is converting into the fe3 two plus state sorry fe2 plus state and in this case when we note the distance that is the fe2 plus sulfur distance it has increased by 2 to 3 percent so they have noted this in p aerogenous and they have noted so this is a type of anaerobic bacteria and they have noted uh, they reduced to form bond distance that is fe2 plus sulfur bond distance and it was found to be around 2.32 armstrong which is of course higher than the fe3 plus sulfur distance so their bond is now a little bit weak so then they both forms that is the oxidized and the reduced forms are in their high spin state and this was proved by using epr and mod by spectroscopy and their geometry is tetrahedral and their redox potential range was found to be around minus 50 to plus 50 millivolts at ph 7 so then they have uh, studied the reactivity of this zinc and iron with the sulfur that is coming from the cysteine group so what i am trying to explain is consider this rubridoxin and this is present in bacteria like clostridium and desulfovibrio and there is some other pro uh, enzyme called aspartate transcarboxylase and this is present in e coli so what is uh, the relation between them is they both are having the same structure that is they both are tetrahedrally surrounded by the sulfur atom from the cysteine group but only the metal is uh, different so in the case of rubridoxin fe is a metal and in the case of this aspartate zinc is a metal here the zinc which is bound to the sulfur from the cysteine group is binding very strongly with the sulfur than fe binding with the sulfur group that's why the proteins that are uh, like rubridoxin protein which is present in bacteria will contain iron concentration very high so whatever bacteria that is using rubridoxin as a protein it will have higher iron concentration than zinc why is that means uh, consider 2 1 that is iron and zinc or uh, competing for a site to attach zinc is having higher reactivity then of course it will come and attach but if iron is present in more numbers then it can be able to easily attach with that site even though their reactivity is low 
that's why this uh, bacteria whichever is using rubridoxin as their electron transferation will have higher ion concentrations uh, than the zinc so we'll be seeing the charge calculations for this uh, reduced and oxidized form in the case of reduced form how will we calculate we know first the oxidation state uh, is written and then the charge uh, that is donated by the ligand added and then equal to the overall charge so initially fe2 plus so 2 plus and this uh, sulfur each sulfur is uh, having minus one charge okay so there are four sulfur so minus four and it will equal to minus two charge so the overall charge present in the reduced form is minus two in the case of oxidized form plus three so three plus uh, minus four from each uh, sulfur minus 1 and then this equal to minus 1 charge so the overall charge in oxidized form is minus 1 but in some cases what happens is uh, that sulfur uh, which is uh, giving minus 1 charge sulfur ligand which is donating minus 1 charge is neutralized by the hydrogen bond formed between the peptide amide group so we know that this entire uh, thing is surrounded by the protein and of course protein is containing the peptide bonds in them and so this is this bond and this NH is present here and this hydrogen and the sulfur from our protein will uh, form a hydrogen bond so that uh, the charge will be neutralized and in that case uh, charges and other things may vary okay. So that's it. Uh, thank you for watching my video. I hope you like this video. If there is any doubts or clarifications, you can mention in comments. Uh, later on, we'll be seeing about uh, fridoxins. I will explain in detail uh, mostly about all the types of uh, fridoxins uh, with uh, many number of ion atoms. So once again, thank you. Thank you for watching.